the waiting. Inspiration Nation, hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on the podcast. As always, with my very good friends, Jose Neuer, Ryan Boniface. How are we doing, guys? Yeah, good, thank you, Lee. Really good, thank you. The waiting. <laughs> Inspiration Nation. It's so Hello, weird watching it on the YouTube. It's such a delight. Another week on the podcast. <laughs> oh, who's echoing As the sound? always, who's echoing with the sound? my very good friends, Jose Noya, I don't know. Ryan not me. Face. How are we doing, guys? Oh, I haven't got any sound. Yeah, good, thank you, Lee. Really good. No, I can hear something as well. There we go. I fixed it. Technical difficulties on our first live, yeah. but this is what gets us going. We are live yeah. right now on TikTok as always. We've been here for the duration of 2022. Follow Joe Neuer, J Neuer underscore Inspiration Nation, and also on YouTube for the very first week. So um, just follow us over there. Again, just search for Jose Neuer Inspiration Nation. Subscribe to the channel. You will find out when we are going live, and we thank everyone for joining us on there as well. Um, as always, social media at Listen to N, listen to OIN, support the show. Um, appreciate you all for doing that. Like, subscribe, five stars, all that good jazz. It helps us go. So I believe after 57 weeks of Joe talking about his favourite story and then me filling the gap last week, Ryan, you are up as the master of conversation this week. Yes. I am. I am. The what wheel, do you have the pickle, <laughs> the, the <laughs> stick, or whatever euphemism all you want to use for this has fallen to me this week and i want to talk about something that we've probably spoken about before um but maybe not directly on it and i could be wrong but i'm gonna do it anyway um and i'm gonna talk about a phrase called what's in it for me um, I like it. and i think i think this is something that we all know about as humans something that we probably have all said have all have all done um and I think it's something that is uh, important because sometimes there doesn't have to be anything in it for you. Uh, but also, I think that it doesn't have to be something obvious that's in it for you. Um, you know, if somebody needs help crossing the road, well, what's in it for me? Well, you're just doing, you're just doing something nice. It make you feel better about yourself. And I think, I think it should be us as humans should take a slightly different approach and um, talk less about what's in it for me and maybe what's in it for the other person. People don't often reach out for help. People struggle to reach out for help as, as human beings, especially um, professionally, because a lot of people don't want to seem uh, undervalued or not, not good at their job or uh, a burden to their peers or to people around them. Um, especially if they've done that job for a while. So, but I think, you know, why would somebody ask you for help? You know, I think the simple answer to that is they genuinely want to do better and they genuinely want to understand how to do better. And I think we've, we've, you know, we've made points on this podcast many a time before where we've spoken about not only our own development, but how we can empower others to develop themselves as well and be better people. And I think this kind of circles in on that uh, quite heavily as well. Um, what are your guys' kind of approaches and thoughts to uh, what's in it for me and things like that? How do you see those things? Lee, you got something? Praise. Um, I guess it, there's two lenses on it. There is me as a person thinking what's in it for me or being driven by that instinct. Yeah. And there's also me having been aware of that past and you in the past and using that as a kind of, and I'm not sure motivational tools even the right way to put it, because you can look at it that way, that, you know, if you get the right kind of what's in it for me indicators, you can get better engagement from people if you're trying to do something. But actually, I think it's a base requirement. I think if you don't have something that triggers people's what's in it for me, or you're not even cognizant of that, you're, you're not going to get what you need if you're looking to, I don't know, roll out something at work or get your friends interested to do things or gain engagement or something if there's not something in it for people you're not going to get that and i think not being aware of that is could be a big problem for people and a big thing why sometimes thing, things don't work so um i always try to be very aware of this concept and draw people it, i was gonna say draw people in 
but get people involved by thinking what would draw them, what's what's the motivating factor, what will give them a sense of self-worth, what gives them something in return, where does their value come in, and make sure that is strongly embedded in a, in a part of whatever you're doing. Um, and like you referenced there, Ryan, sometimes that can be quite overt. Sometimes you directly spill that out to people, and sometimes it can be more subtle. Um, and yeah. then it becomes that, you know, so there's, there's, a, there's a thing you, that, that's talked about in, in work as a very simple term, a, a phrase I've used, which is, you know, peer pressure is a great motivator. But it's, it's the same thing that drives, as we all know, we talked before, I'm a great Fortnite player. And you tick off challenges or there's a leaderboard. I was doing some things on there called Death Runs the other day, which are challenge things. And it tells you who the top three people are that have progressed. And I was really driven by getting myself onto that top three, then to second, then to first, because there's that competitive edge to it. And that can be a what's in it for me driver. Or you might be in a job yeah. where you have a bonus scheme and that's a what's in it for me driver. So there's 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 all those sort of things there that I say I'm aware of. And I guess I touched in there as well how it, it drives me. And I think that competitive edge whether it's against other people or it's against myself to do better is is definitely something that drives me and it it fits in that bracket completely i think a lot of people get lost in the uh the value of what's in it for me sometimes people will hear the answer or somebody hasn't an answered that question and think that's not enough so i don't care um and that's a further issue but joe yeah, I just really thinking about what you're both saying, and I think there is a, a lot of that. You know, I do, as you know, I do coaching and training, and and you know, when you're delivering, you have to think about your audience and uh, what you're going to deliver, and actually, what are they going to be taking away? And you know, well, actually, we've not done it for a while. Actually, we, we talk about it, don't we? You know, your biggest takeaway, right, from the conversation. I think we've done that a couple last couple of weeks. Actually, maybe we should, you know, we should we need to be addressing that at the end of this. Um, but absolutely right. So I've, I've been training coaching today. And part of the conversation was, you know, what's the big takeaway? What have you, what have you learned? And part of the feedback is, you know, what, what's your been your biggest takeaway? And how you, will you implement it? How will you sustain it? Because, you know, this is going to be, you know, coaching gives, you know, and I'm talking from the, from the from the lens of coaching because, you know, what does it give you? One, you help people through it. One, it makes you better listening to people, so it makes you more skilled. And the other person gets progress from it. And you both feel good because if that person starts to make progress, you both feel good off the back of it. So I can't, it's sort of like a win win for both. So that's why I love that what's in it for me because it's got to be twofold, really. Um, for me, you know, delivering coaching is just, you know, helping people realize the power of it and how it can really accelerate your own growth as we've sort of experienced here on the podcast right and how we do it and how we develop but also how they can then take away that skill and apply it and go and help other people so it's almost like a compounding effect of what it's in it for me not only am i getting you know i like think we talked about before where you know we, we, we do this stuff and the byproduct is that you actually feel good about doing it but you know some people look at it oh well, i'm doing it because you know it helps other people and it makes you feel good and it, and it is then and, and i think we talked about it that is that what is is that a good thing but i think it is a great thing um where we get that feeling of helping others and i think you know part of the purpose of the human race is to help each other and we should be helping each other more and i think that's a really they say that to help well-being and mental health to help other people actually does help your mental health so the what's in it for is massive in that regard, Ryan. And that's my take on it. I really, I really, really like it. And again, when Lee was talking about the competition piece about Fortnite, for me, I'm playing, you know, I play tennis, as you know, I've taken it up recently. And, um, you know, by me getting better and playing other people, and you see yourself get better, it does want to motivate you to play more. Um, and in fact, I've just entered a local tennis uh, competition. Nice. So I'm going to test my skills there and the read the what's in it for me there is well i'm going to test against not only people in my club but people outside the club because it's not a club competition it's actually like you know um like, like a, a local area competition so i'm going to meet other people and it's quite nice to meet other people so the other is means other social aspects playing against others playing against different styles but maybe meeting some other people that will be they're also keen in that as well so there's a lot a lot there right so it was a really really good subject uh ryan because i think sometimes you have to look for the what's in it for me as well but maybe it's not obvious at first um, I think sometimes it's like almost like discovering your purpose and actually the, why you do the job you do. Can you discover meaning and purpose? There's a lot of what's in me. This is a very, very, you know, big question, which I think is great. But primarily, I think I know what you're saying, going with it, you know, can we identify what's, what's in it for me as a person? But also if I'm, I'm, if I'm doing something for others, what's in it for them? And thinking about them is really, 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 really important the way you deliver things. So, yeah, I love that, Ryan. Really good. That was my take. Thank you. I think 
you know, outside of the small gesture of, um, I don't know, your partner asking you to make them a cup of tea or um, your friend asking you to pass them, I don't know, a, a condiment or whatever, you know, there's, there's, there, to me, a lot of things in life can be quite transactional. Um, you don't give to receive, and that's a life lesson I learned very early on in life, but you you can offer to receive, if that makes sense. So you can kind of head off the what's in it for me question by saying, uh, if you help me with this report, I'll put your name on it and it looks good for you at your next appraisal. Bam. Yeah, I've got a spare half hour. Joe, of course I can help you with your report. Not a problem. Um, if it's suddenly, can you just help me with this report? And they say, why? Uh, and they go, well, because I need help. Then suddenly that becomes a bit more standoffish. Sometimes I feel like on a slightly bigger gesture or on a slightly bigger request, offering to receive, you make an offer to receive help back, is gives you a higher chance of success in terms of getting that support. And that, things don't always have to be transactional. Of course, I'm not. I'm not saying that's the be all and end all. But I think a lot of interactions become that way without us realizing as people. Um, so I think it's always important that if you are seeking the help of other people, that you take. You try not to be, and I think selfish is a really strong word for this. But you try not to be selfish and just say, "Well, I need the help." And try and think of a reason that this person's help will benefit you and them. Because that's how you're likely to to increase the chance of them saying yes. Actually, yeah. I think that's where it becomes mm. a tool, if you like. So there's, again, it's the two lenses. One is how does that affect you? How are you motivated by it? Um, and actually, how can you start to motivate yourself by driving that? And I thought we talked... We talked off air, I think, last week about this, Joe, but I'll, I'll reference it here and I'll do another show in a while. But I've stepped up my whole kind of little and often plan on, on trying to get stuff done. And I talked to you last week about the fact that for the, the month of January, I made myself like a to-do list and I broke that down into lots of little jobs. And I I got through, I would say, 90% of that, which really progressed on a lot of things for me, um, which I, did, I was aware I needed to do, but I'd have done them with less... I don't think I'd have been as organised and I probably wouldn't have got as much done if I didn't have it there. And in fact, my last job of January was to create a new list for February, which I'm now working on. But because I can tick them off as I go and I have a little list of what I want to achieve as the board up activities and I can tick them off, for me, that gives me a good sense of achievement. So I'm kind of fueling my own what's in it for me by 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 driving that, knowing that that, what's, that is what makes me tick. So I think you can use it for your own self-motivation. You can gravitate towards activities that you know you're going to get that fulfillment from, be it the to-do list or finishing last in a tennis tournament, whatever whatever those things are. Um, and I think then you can be conscious, like, like the examples we talked about there, when you're in... If you need someone to do something for you, if you need some help, if you know they've got a skill that you could utilise, then how do you consciously make that a two-way transaction? What can you, again, directly or subconsciously give them in return or know that what makes them tick to, to help with that? So I think you can really use that as a tool, not only to be able to offer things out to people and get things back in return, um, but make people feel good about that. Know what takes make them tick. Actually, give people a sense of positivity as well. And I think that can be, you know, again, personal life, work life, all of that it becomes a really, really useful tool, rather than just kind of putting stuff out there and hoping you get something in return and being that kind of, you know, the neighbour that always borrows something but no one ever does anything in return, and pretty soon you never get to borrow anything. So I think yeah. it's, it's a really good thing to be conscious of and aware of. I totally agree. Yeah, I totally agree. And just to build off the back of that, there was something up because I think the tra I think the thing that Ryan was saying about the transactional is so true that you know, you know, back in the day, you know, I would do things because oh, I want something out of it. You know, you like, I'm doing it. If I do this for you, would you do that for me? And I think this is a really common thing. In fact, me and my beloved, we were like talking the other day, and um, I wouldn't. I, I, I used to get a cup of tea or whatever something like that, and. 
and uh, I'm going to reveal this. She's probably going to kill me if she listens to this. But I don't know if she listens to it anyway. But, um, but she said, oh, I'll get, you know, she said, um, I said, it's still about a cup of tea. I guess a cup of tea. I said, no, I can't do it. It's actually, I was editing the podcast. I said, I can't do it at the moment. But I do loads of things for you. I do this, I do that, I do the other. And what I said, I actually came back with what this is about. I said, uh, this isn't transactional. I said, this is, we, we do things because we want to do them. I do things. I'll get you a cup of tea. It's not because I want a cup of tea in the future. It's doing it because I want to go and get it for you at this point. And I don't want anything for it. I just want to do it because I love you. And that's how I was doing it. I said, this is what I mean. I, I don't think it's transactional. I think a lot of relationships can go on that way. And we had a good old discussion about it. It's really, really good. And we've been together 20, 30 years. And it's really interesting when we have these conversations that I, I now do things because I want to do them. I do them. And if I don't want to do them, I will be polite and say, I, I won't do that. Um, if people ask you for help, um, I, I, I'm more inclined to, to just say yes. And I really think it's been from a, like a real personal um, lens. And um, when I ask for help, which I do ask for help, I usually say to someone, do you know, you know, I really like, if there's like a lot of things on data, for instance, or something, I'm not good with data and you guys know I'm not good with technology. So if I have to collect a lot of stats and put those stats together, I'll try and find someone who's really great at stats because I am no good. I just know I'm not good at pulling all that stuff together. So I'll say to, I'll go to someone, I'll say to them, do you know, I really need some help. You're really good at this. And they are, and I'm gen they are genuinely really good at it. And this is where I need your help. And usually the, the response is that they will help me because I've recognised their strength and they'll help because they want to help because that's what they love to do. They love to do it. And I'm, I'm, ch I'm tuning into what they love to do. Likewise, when I'm in my place where, where oh, do you know, I need some coaching um, strategy or whatever, people will come to me. And I'm, I'm really happy to do that because that's, that's, speaking to my, that's speaking my language. I can then use my strength in that area. So, But I'm doing it because I want to do it. I'm doing it because... That's, that's, that, that's something I'm really trying to focus on. I'm doing it because I don't want to do it as a transaction. I want to do it because I actually want to do it for the good of what this relationship or, or whatever it is for the good, for the greater good, I suppose, I'm trying to, trying to say. I don't want to do it because I'm expecting something back in the future. That's what I want to get away from. But it's difficult, and I get it, and I understand it. Um, so, yeah, that's my take on it. But it can happen, like you say, any, anything like relationships, work content you know, work anywhere it, it but it's really really interesting when you actually see and observe it and sometimes you find it in yourself because sometimes you do do it. and i'm trying really not to do it that way because i wanted it because i genuinely want to do it because i want to do it and i think from doing that i think from my point of view i actually do a better job because i really want to do it um and that's where that's where i think it, it really the what's in it for me really speaks to me in that way yeah i think i think there's depending on how much you need something and how much you want something there's a way to and i've always been quite good at this um and i don't know if it falls down to my charismatic motivator tendencies um but i have always been quite good at making somebody or asking for someone's help in a way that makes it look like it only benefits them sounds quite manipulative and i never mean it to be that way i put my hands up i never mean it to be that way but and I can't really give you an example, but I know that I've done it before where I've been like, oh, I really can't be bothered to do X. Um, can you do it for me? And I'll make sure Y happens down the line. I'll make sure that you get you get all the credit for all the work that's been done on it. And it, and, and I'm very good at, at being able to influence. I think it's probably a, a fairer word I would use people to assist me in that and that's that can be quite dangerous and there are people that are like me that are like that that are quite strong personality and strong-minded and i don't know if this resonates with either of you two um you have to kind of keep that in check sometimes and be like no that's actually that can actually be quite rude um or not fair or um you're just being lazy or whatever and and i think you know it's a it's a wider subject than just what's in it for you it, what's in it for me sorry it's it's more of a topic on how we assess and treat the needs of others as well I so i think it's it, right as long as you're genuine so like you said it's oh, yeah you tell me this but i'll make sure you get all the credit for it as, and as yeah. long as you follow through with that then that's I fine i think that is that is benefiting the person but again you're it's being good to let them see why it's in their advantage to do something can i say that i think it's only becomes manipulative if you basically lie 
to get people on board if you kind of talk about something that isn't going to happen or you're going to do something you don't follow through with or you exaggerate the benefit that's that's where it's a problem but actually again if you it's just that it's that key motivator for people i always think is things genuinely only happen because of one reason which is necessity if it wasn't for necessity this is this is why work you know the old cliche of work getting done just before the deadline or you always clean the house a lot better when someone's coming round in five minutes and and all that sort of stuff um it's because of the necessity the necessity ups the intensity on what you need to do and i think benefit is a necessity because i also think so you can create necessity necessity isn't just someone gives you a deadline it's where your bar is for that and if something is beneficial enough that you want it that then becomes a necessity going to work for example going to work to get paid it's not like anyone's got a gun to your head necessity wise but you want to get paid so that you can pay your rent or your mortgage and your bills or afford to go out or buy whatever it is and you you set your bar of necessity and i just think what's in it for me is you're just you're setting necessity bars and then that drives that drives the outcome and i think at a core kind of human behavior level that's what it all comes back to which is fasc- yeah absolutely fascinating fascinates and fascinates me fascinates it i was going to call it pavlov's triangle but pavlov was definitely the dog bell guy mm. um on, it's the triangle. It's the triangle thing, isn't it? I can't remember what it's called. The the, the, the need, the triangle of need. You, your basic needs, and then your oh Maslow. That's, that's it. Not Pavlov. Maslow. That's the one. Um, but you you can once you get out of the I need food to live, and I need water to live, and I need clothes to live, or whatever. That's where that necessity that Leeds refers to factors into your, the more of the secondary stuff. Um. And a lot of people's will be similar. I mean, there are enough people on the planet that, you know, just by the process of elimination and, and frequency, that will happen. But, you know, a lot of people will, will say that that work is a necessity. Well, I can't not go to work. Well, of course you can. But there will be consequences if you don't. But you, you don't have to go. So what's in it for me? Well, you get your rent paid. Or you get your mortgage paid. You get the food that's put on your table. Um, and... You know, I think as as humans as well, even if it's just a single person, well, I'll call it a transaction again. Even if it's a single person transaction, you still have to ask, what's in it for me? My left side of my brain wants me to cook dinner, but your right side saying, well, what's in it for me? Well, you get nutrition. And you, you, every decision you make comes with a what's in it for me uh, rebuttal question. Why do I need to pick up the bath mat? because otherwise it'll get damp you'll get mold but what's in it for me well you don't want mold in your house do you oh yeah no fair enough you're right yeah i'll pick up the bathroom and that's it, that's, it. that's the way that that goes on yeah. in your brain without you even realizing it by the time you've got up in the morning and turned your alarm off and gone to the toilet and made breakfast you've already asked yourself what's in it for me about 60 times and you or minimum and you haven't even realized it and that's all that's all in the, the decision making of life so you can really boil it down and you can you can um deep it if you like more so than than what you would in a lot of other scenarios and that's it's quite interesting when you look at it that granularly it's so funny you saying about the bath mat and the what's in it for me because when my when my daughter's at university at the moment but when she was here she'd go in the go in the bathroom have a shower and not pick up the bath mat and she was definitely not thinking oh I'm going to be like, the, it's like my dad or my mum will pick it up. That's what it's in for me. I don't have to do it because they're going to pick it up. <laughs> I just love that analogy. I just think, oh, I know, I know exactly which daughter did it as well. It does it all the time. <laughs> but now they're in their own flat. They're picking up it all the time because they don't want to pick it up. So now they're really thinking about, oh, if I don't pick this up, no one else is picking this up. I, mean, I have to pick it up. So I really like it's that, like by the way. Necessity button clicking in, isn't it? Yeah, it's now. It's now because... Hard. Now I'm not there, or we, you know, they're living away. They're having to be more responsible, and so yeah, the kicks in more. I love that though because it's a really, really thing. It's like I said, when I, you know, when I was younger, you know, uh, and I would leave stuff about. I wouldn't do the washing up, or and then you know, mum will pick it up or whatever, um, you know, and then go, why do you do that? You know, so again, it's it, there is that thing, and, and as I say, I think as as you grow older, I think you definitely think of that uh, more because you don't want the hassle of. I'll pick up later or the hassle of doing things later. I think that's a really, really good point. 
Um, but yeah, when you're younger, I think you don't necessarily think of it. You just think, oh, well, someone else will pick that up for me or whatever. Or depending on what your house situation is, maybe I'm not saying that younger people don't do that. I'm just saying, just depending on your situation. Cause oh, I was, I was definitely like that. I was definitely like that. And, I, and in some ways, I still am. You rely on the benefits of your parents, right? Um, well, <laughs> yeah, go on. All the, peop- all the people you live with, yeah, for sure. Um, because you're, as you say, in, in that scenario with the bath mat, it's like, what's in it for me? Uh, Mum will get it. It's all right. Don't have to worry. And then that split second decision has been made because you're not the one at peril for making the wrong call. Mum is, or dad is, or whoever. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to pick it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we'll pick up the mat and we don't want the mat staying there because it looks dirt. It, it's going to, like you say, get damp. It's going to be horrible for the next person that uses it. So absolutely 100%. Yeah, I love that. I think the Lee, you're looking very thoughtful there. I am, I am. I think this is it's one of those things, again, and I love this, is once you become consciously aware of things that are already going in your brain, you can really start to shape it. And it's, you know, this is, you can really fuel your self-development by honing these these natural skills. I absolutely, I love conversations like this. I really, really do. Um, as everyone can see, yeah. they are watching us live right now on YouTube or watching back on the playback. Um, not live on TikTok, not if you're on a podcast player, but we have about eight minutes left on our stream. So it's time to do some wrapping up. Thanks for the great conversation, Ryan. Again, people out there, if you are with us now, chances are you like what you do, like what you're doing. You probably do. You also like what we're doing. Um, we'd love your support. Follow us over on Twitter at Listen to Way and listen T O I N. And we are live every single week um, with the podcast recorded. You can get involved, interact in the show, get involved in the chat on TikTok, J Noyer underscore Inspiration Nation, and YouTube as well. Just search Jose Noyer Inspiration Nation. Hit subscribe on either one. You will get notified. Not only that, there is loads of great content coming out in the week. Long form videos, short form videos, shorts, loads and loads of inspiration in whatever size you need it. And of course, if you are listening to us right now as you're walking up the road or in the car or on the bus on a podcast player, um, just come out of that player, hit the five star button, hit subscribe. That really, really massively helps us in the alg- algorithms and we appreciate you for it. I'm at that stage where it's too much coffee or not enough coffee that I'm tripping over my words. I'm one way, <laughs> one way each Love side it. of that line at the moment, but I'll get it right one week. Um, Yes, thank you, everyone. And, of course, inspirationnation.org.uk is your place for everything to do with the podcast. Nearly four years' worth of podcasts in there to, to dip into if you haven't been through the archive. We appreciate everyone doing that. And, of course, the store. Me and Joe are wearing our hoodies. You can see this week mugs are hopefully in shot as well. Mine just no, about I've got, makes it from the green screen. But I was drinking out of mine, so mine's in the dishwasher at the moment. I know exactly where it is. But blurry. Yeah, so have... Look at that. It is a bit blurry. But there it is. Oh, it was there. It was there. There, there you go. Is. Look at that. On the well done, Ryan, mate. That's good. As our T-shirts and hoodies and stickers and all sorts of other merchandise and jazz, all of which supports us doing what we're doing. I think that's it now. All that's left for me to do. I thought, hang, hang on, hang on. I might hang on, want it, hang on. don't you worry. Do you want to do it? Do you big, want to do it? Big, no, big takeaway. Any big takeaways? Oh, yeah, I'm like, going big for the with spring rolls, duck, <laughs> I love crispy fried chilli beef. That joke's funnier every time I do it, I reckon. That's a good I Chinese order as well. If, you're, if we're having Chinese, then you're ordering it. <laughs> oh, I love Chinese. Right, anyway, my Chinese. actual takeaway is just it's being more conscious of this. I'm going to, as I get up tomorrow, I'm going to try and start thinking how often I'm doing this to myself and whether I can use it to better how i do during the day yeah yeah my, mine is just to continue to try and not be so transactional like i'm really want to focus on that you know not doing it because i want something out of it doing it because i actually really want to do it and benefit the greater good that's mine and, and it, you know get out that yeah, transaction yeah. mindset yeah i think mine would be that um just want to be conscious that i'm not relying on other people more than i need to and that I'm offering good, enough back. Love that. Good stuff, guys. Again, if you are on the YouTube, our favourite videos and recommendations will be coming up for you in a minute all around the screen here. Please click, see what we've got going on. Um, and if you are listening, just dive back in that archive of episodes as well. There is loads of great stuff there, even if we do say ourselves. Fab. Yes. Inspiration Nation. Inspiration Nation. Catch you guys later. Catch, Catch you guys, guys later. later. Yeah. So what did